Hey, Phil White here. I'm the Geospatial Data Librarian at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, just wanted to make a quick video about geocoding in ArcGIS Pro because I got a question about it. And a lot of times it's easier for me to just make a quick video than to type out a response. The um, question was about geocoding and address locators. And um, I just wanted to do a quick demonstration. So what I have here is a table of addresses. Uh, schools in Colorado. This one is, I, I, it was an Excel sheet and I added it using the Excel to table tool over here, uh, which you can find in, in geoprocessing by just searching, you know, Excel. Um, but here it is and here's the, here's the result. Uh, have, what I have here in this one is um, I've got street addresses here, I've got county, city, and state, zip codes all, all baked into this spreadsheet that I now have as a standalone table in ARC. Now, um, question was about uh, geocoding services. Now, to geocode something, you know, the, the quick and easy thing to do is right-click on the table you want to geocode and select geocode table. That will open up this Geocoding table uh, tool interface. Uh, Esri will give you this sort of walkthrough thing. You can click start if you want. They're kind of hand holding, or just go to the tool. I, I always think it's easier. Um, and the question is, you know, what what is the database that you're querying here uh, to get your addresses? And if you have a if you have a uh, organizational license, uh, usually it comes with Esri's ArcGIS World Geocoding Service. Basically, it's a server. Uh, that you are sending the addresses to and it's giving you the answers back. Now, if you don't have this, then um, it's important to know that there are there are definitely other options. And, um, you know, in my case, what I'm going to show you is, uh, so since I live in Colorado and I'm working with some Colorado data, I'm going to go grab um, a Colorado address locator off the internet. Uh, so, here's one way to do this. Um, I know this exists, but uh, I'm sure a lot of states have something similar. If, I'm just going to Google Colorado Geocoding Locator Service. You might also do like address locator. Um, and here we go. I'm looking here, uh, data.colorado.gov, public address locator. And clicking on that and seeing, okay, show me the REST service. Um, and this is, a, this is an ArcGIS uh, server, ArcGIS REST server. And you might be thinking, okay, how do I use this? So let's take a look at this. So literally, you can copy this link from your browser bar. Go back to ArcGIS Pro. Click on the Insert tab and go to Connections. Here, you can literally add a, a connection to a server. So I know this is an ArcGIS server. I'm going to choose new ArcGIS server. And I'm just going to paste my URL for that, that address locator in there. Doesn't require username or password in this case. And click OK. And that went really quickly. Now, if you go back over to your catalog, you can see that um, under servers here, you have a geocode server on gis.colorado.gov. OK. Now, also on your catalog, you have a uh, locators folder. If I click down on this, you can see there's the ArcGIS World Geocoding Service that came with our subscription. But if I right click on this locators folder, we can add another locator. That will open up this dialog, uh, select an existing locator. And under project, you will see servers. You can click on your servers and just click on the geocoding server we just added. Uh, if you click through there, you'll find a few different things. Um, I know what we want is uh, under under the geocoders folder, and it's the composite, which is basically a combine a combination of, of these two uh, in a, into a composite. So I'm going to click OK, and it's been added. So now back over to Colorado Schools uh, table here. If I click geocode table, um, go back to my tool. And under my uh, input locator, I can choose the new one that we just added. 
and it will ask you a couple questions. Um, is your data in more than one field? Uh, if, if all of your data is in like one column, your full address, you could select one field and then choose the column. Mine's in more than one, I'm gonna leave it there. It noticed uh, city and zip, uh, but it didn't pick up the street. I just need to select the right column from the table. It was this one that was street underscore add. And I'm gonna leave this selected to add the output to the map after it's done. I'm just gonna leave this all in default and click run. Okay, and now I've got some results. It is, uh, you can see behind uh, this, this notification, all of these points that were plotted out. It's giving me the results. It's saying there were 1,416 matched, 75%, 381 unmatched, that was 20%, and 91 tied. Um, and it asks the question, uh, do you want to start the rematch process? Um, if you got all matched, then I would say you could skip this. Um, given the results were not totally perfect, I'd say you want to start the rematch process. There's a lot to work through. Hopefully you don't have too many to do. I'm going to say yes. What that's going to do is open up this, add a new tab over here. It opened up our, our output table, but more importantly, um, there's a new tab called rematch addresses. And so here we go on the rematching. What we have here are, I'm, going to, I'm just going to close this for now. We have our, our results. So unmatched, are there's our 381. You can cycle through them. Um, there are matched. These are the ones that we presume are correct. And then there are ties. Ties are ones where there are multiple, oops, where there are multiple candidates. So for example, in this example, um, there were several other ones. Um, it picked what it thinks is the right one. Um, but it looks like this is a school that has just multiple buildings or something like that. Um, and I'm just going to leave this one as is. And you can cycle through your ties and you can change them if you want. Um, I'm not going to mess with those right now. Um, for the unmatched, though, uh, so these are ones that need a little bit of a closer look. If you, um, you know, one thing you could do is try to Google it or something. I looked at this one and... Um, I'm not sure what the problem is with this one. A lot of times what you wind up with are candidates that you just want to confirm. Um, so it, for this one, it didn't match it, but it thinks it's here. Now, if I were to go and maybe Google this, I can maybe just check and confirm it. Let's see what, see what Google has to say about it. Um, this was in... Castle Rock? Yes, Castle Rock. So there it is. Let's go find out. Okay. This looks like the right spot to me, right? Okay, so I'm going to just say, yes, this is it. Um, and you can go on through that process. Um, each time you check that one is correct, it will just reduce this number. And then when you're done, you always want to hit Save Edits. And then, you know, you can move on about it. Um, keep going through the rematching process as you see fit. Um, you know, if you're dealing with, you know, something like tens or hundreds of thousands or even millions of, of addresses, well, you could probably do, make a decision to just cast off ones if, you're, if your percentage of matched are good enough. Uh, that's kind of up to you. But this is the general process for uh, geocoding and but the main point was if you do not have access to the world geocoding service there's always other options out there um, I would google around for state geocoding services that are free uh, that's all for this video uh, thanks for watching and um, as always if you all have questions feel free to email me at philip.white at colorado.edu bye for now